Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Alright, pack one, pick one. Open a pretty exciting rare, Dread Presence. It does require us to be pretty heavy black in order to fully take advantage, so it's not a splashable rare, but even in a two-color deck we're uh, still happy to play Dread Presence with eight or nine swamps. What else do we have? Some other decent uncommons, Angel of Vitality, decent in the life gain deck, even outside of life gain synergies, a three mana, two two flyers playable. We've got Wave Crasher, which is great, can re-trigger enter battlefield effects, it's an elemental for elemental synergies. Fine in Teamer, fine in blue-black, maybe re-triggering Fen Lurkers and other Frost Lynxes, for example. And then looking at the commons, we've got some nice ones too. Sleep Paralysis is okay, would definitely take the Outrage over it, which is probably the best common in this pack, and might be better than the Uncommons as well. I think it would take Outrage over the Uncommons, but I think I'm probably still taking Dread Presence over the Outrage. And then Smuggler is also one of my pet cards in this archetype, or in this format rather. So yeah, I think if I had to rank this pack, I would probably go Dread Presence, Outrage, Wave Crasher, and then it's close between the Angel, Sleep Paralysis, Smuggler. But yeah, I think I'm gonna lead with the Dread Presence here. Alright, get rewarded with a second pick, Gravedigger. Another great black card here, nice two for one. Good synergy in black since we are often filling up the graveyard, sacrificing stuff, getting things back. So Gravedigger plays quite well. Any other cards that stand out, Mask of Immolation is great, would also play well in a black-red deck with Gravediggers and other sacrifice effects like the Sanitarium Skeleton, for example. So those are like the immediate cards that stand out. Woodland Champion can also be quite good in some decks. It's kind of a build around, it's not going to be great in any deck, but like as a baseline 2-mana two 2-2 two -two with a little bit of upside, it's still decent. So it's definitely a solid uncommon as well. Griffin Protector, okay white card, but white's kind of weak in this format, sadly. Definitely gonna take the Gravedigger out of this pack, and then, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Agonizing Siphon, Bone Splinters definitely stand out as just excellent cards, and they also happen to be in our color, so don't see a reason to deviate. Diamond Knight is also a consideration if we're gonna be heavy black, since it would play well alongside Dread Presence, which also wants to be heavy black. Which one do we take? Bone Splinters is a little bit of a build around in that we want to make sure we have enough sacrifice fodder to go with it. Sanitarium Skeleton, the prime example. There's a couple others that we don't mind sacrificing. Fen Lurkers, for example, after we get a card out of the opponent's hand. Uh, Gravedigger, I guess, isn't the worst. Siphon is just kind of the more solid cards if we don't get there on the sacrifice fodder. Um, that doesn't require as much build around. And then I think Diamond Knight is probably a distant third for now, since we know, don't know for sure if we're going to be mono black or if we're going to have a second color. If we were going to be mono black, then I could see an argument for Diamond Knight being better, but uh, I'll stick to the Siphon for now as kind of the safer pick. Siphon also has a bit of upside if we do end up in black white life gain. It's not necessarily an archetype I actively try to aim for, but you know, if we get some late life gain payoff cards, then uh, we might end up there. Well, we're seeing some interesting cards still here. The Reclamation is a very powerful engine if we can get it going. It's not the easiest and it doesn't work in every deck, but if we take it early, maybe even splashable, then uh, this plays quite well with kind of the Bone Splinters theme. Uh, Boreal Elemental also quite good here, so I think these are the cards we're considering. No black cards in the pack that we want. Uh, the white cards are all pretty medium, so it's between Boreal and Reclamation. Portal, I guess, also has a bit of synergy with the Gravedigger, but I think it would take the Boreal Elemental over Portal at the moment. If we had more synergy with the Portal, then it goes up in value, of course. I don't think I'm supposed to take Portal over Boreal Elemental right now. So we'll take the Reclamation and then hopefully we can get there on kind of the black-green Sacrifice Graveyard Value deck. So cards that kind of go up in value after we take Moldervine Reclamation, uh, Sanitarium Skeleton, Bone Splinters, 
the Vulture that uh, mills the top cards of our deck, as that can further enable Graveyard Synergies. And of course, green cards are on the table now as well. All right, speaking of green cards, Leafkin Druid's a pretty good one. Of course, we could still be kind of a heavy black with a touch of green for Reclamation to make our Dread Presence better. But I think Leafkin Druid's probably good enough that we should take it here. Uh, Sorcerer of the Fang is also decent, just as an early play that uh, can later win us a game if there's a board stall. Definitely a solid card as well. The Scuttle Mutt can also help us ramp and fix our mana, but given the Reclamation, probably makes more sense to just take the Leafkin Druid for now. Like, we're not committed to green by any means, but if possible, we do want to play the Reclamation, and the Leafkin Druid is probably the best card in the pack, so might as well go for it. All right, there's the Bone Splinters, so that's a pretty easy pickup now that we have the Reclamation to go with it. Uh, Marauder's Axe is also playable, probably not at its best in this archetype we're drafting, uh, but it is kind of a mana sink that gives us something to do in the late game and make our smaller creatures more relevant. Here we have an Epic here, which does synergize with the Agonizing Siphon, uh, plays quite well with the Dread Presence as well. So yeah, the, the Epic here could be good enough. The other option here is maybe like a plummet for the sideboard. Best card in a pack in general is probably the Lavakin Brawler, although we're pretty far away from a red elemental deck here, with only Leafkin Druids as an elemental and some pretty good incentives to stay black. So it's between Plummet and Apicure. I think it's early enough that uh, Apicure is probably okay, since we might be able to pick up some cards that play well with it. Yeah, the Reclamation also gains life, so yeah, we have quite a bit of life gain already, despite not having a ton of cards. Here, since we're playing best of three, Veil of Summer is a pretty excellent sideboard card. Um, Portal has a bit of synergy with the Gravedigger. That's still kind of the only thing it has going for it. If we get like amazingly lucky and open a Yarok, then like being a Sultai deck with Portal could be pretty sweet. There is also Goblin Smuggler still in the pack, so it could be a sign that Red is open, but I mean, getting a Veil this late in best of three is also kind of a sign, although I'm not sure if the bots actually have a different uh, pick order for best of three or best of one. I doubt they do. Right, uh, Cutthroat and Tracker are both playable. So the Cutthroat is going to be at its best if we end up with a bunch of Audacious Thieves that want to be attacking. Opponent's going to be kind of forced to block and then Cutthroat can still take down a larger creature that has taken a bit of damage. Cutthroat's okay alongside like smaller creatures like Sanitarium Skeleton that can chip in for damage and if they block we don't mind if the skeleton dies. A tracker can help us find. Gravedigger, Dread Presence, we have a lot of powerful creatures already and can take advantage of the extra mana from the Leafkin Druid in the late game. So I don't mind a tracker here. We seem to be more kind of a grindy late game oriented deck instead of a more beat downy deck where the Cutthroat might be better. Also important to note that the Goblin Smuggler also wields, so no respect for the Goblin Smuggler. But uh, yeah, I don't think we want to go down that path here. Healer could be a serviceable sideboard card against some more aggressive decks out there. I doubt we'll have a ton of like uh, elemental synergies in black green. Wolfkin Bond is also a playable card. The rest is a mediocre sideboard option. Uh, could also speculate on like reduced ashes if we want to splash red. But because we have Dread Presence, we're kind of more incentivized to stay in two colors as opposed to try and splash. Yeah, could also take a Raptor for the sideboard. All the decisions are pretty marginal here, and they're probably more for the sideboard than for the main deck. So what's more likely to be a good sideboard option? Like if we get there on the Season of Growth, then the Wolfkin Bond could be an okay main deck card as well, since we seem to be a pretty creature-heavy deck. So I could see Season of Growth plus a bunch of pump spells being an okay addition to this deck. So I'll take the Wolfkin Bond, but right now it doesn't look like I'm going to play it. Maybe we'll need a gift, doubt it, but I guess it also gains life for the Epicure. Now I'll take a healer for the sideboard. Right, so we've got a few sideboard cards here with the Veil. Maybe the Bonds, I'll keep it in the main for now. And then uh, the Healer of the Glade as well. Don't think we're 
switching into red, although I'm probably never playing the indenture. I guess it has a bit of synergy in our deck, maybe. Not a wolf can bond. Alright, so moving into the second pack here. Our deck seems okay so far. Needs a bit more early game stuff. Audacious Thief could be okay. More Leafkin Druids. Uh, Sanitarium Skeletons. Murder, of course, pretty high up on our list. And then, uh, yeah, just trying to round out our deck a little bit. Silverback Shaman at 5 mana would be a nice one. Look to pick up some finishers as well. Or just more grindy cards like Soul Salvage. Alright, well, this bank kind of has it all. It's got the Murder as an excellent removal spell. It's got the Blood for Bones to reanimate stuff from the graveyard. It's got the Wakefruit Elemental as a finisher. Given that we kind of want to be a Dread Presence deck, I doubt the Wakefruit's going to be amazing. Like, we could play Gift of Paradise, and then Leafkin Druid can potentially make double green to help us activate the Wakefruit. It's pretty medium at the moment. Probably just got to take the Murder. I mean, Blood for Bones is good too, but I think Murder is going to be more important at the moment. Because we have Dread Presence, Gravedigger is kind of grindy cards at 4 mana, the Reclamation has another grindy option. We just want to make sure we survive, and at the moment we're pretty weak to Flyers as well. I think the Murder is just going to be more important. And then, I mean, it would be amazing if we can wheel one of these cards, that's probably not going to happen. Maybe if we get there on the Season of Growth, then the Growth Cycle could be useful. Yeah, I think we gotta go with the murder. Alright, this pack has a ton of great options. Fen Lurker would be great. With our Bone Splinters, gives us an early play. Howling Giant is a nice late game play. Not our Leaf Kindred would be amazing. Rabbit Bite would be okay. Not our Siphon, so I wish we could take the entire pack here. I think it's probably gonna be one of the two mana creatures here. Just to kind of help us shore up the early game. Rabbit Bite at the moment doesn't look great since we don't have many big creatures to kind of fight with. So it's probably between Fun Lurker and Leafkin Druid. Leafkin Druid provides some significant acceleration into some of these clunkier cards. Fun Lurker plays great with the Bone Splinters. And uh, if we can also get it back with the Gravedigger later, it's a nice value play. Uh, Howling Giant would be a consideration if we had more early game stuff as a very powerful curve topper. Yeah, the Fen Lurker is also kind of a mana sink. It's not a great one, but better than nothing. Yeah, I'll take the Fen Lurker. Now I'm looking at this Season of Growth potentially. We mentioned it earlier in the drafts. Since we are a creature-heavy deck, this could provide a bit of value over a longer game. Uh, Overcome could also be a finisher. There's Mammoth Spider to help against Flyers, which we're pretty weak to at the moment. Yeah, Season does tend to wheel. Could be okay to take the Spider and then hope to wheel the Season. I don't think we necessarily need the Overcome. If we had some of the pops, then Overcome would go up in our estimation. But we're looking to be a more grindy deck and get ahead with Reclamation, Dread Presence, Gravedigger. We're not necessarily trying to end the game quickly with an Overcome. So Spider also just kind of helps us stall out uh, the game a little bit block flyers, and we can get it back with Gravedigger. So I'm kind of lacking the Mammoth Spider here. Alright, how about just a nice dual land? Can basically play this over a forest, so we still have green mana. It doesn't count as a Swamp for Dread Presence, but it does help us fix the mana for Murder and Fun Lurker, as opposed to basic forest. So it seems quite good. Cutthroat and Corsair are playable, Scuttle Mod, but I think just making our mana a bit better is reasonable. Alright, could do the same here and take an Evolving Wilds, which does get Swamp. There's also Pattern Matcher, which is also a pretty decent card if we can get some duplicates. Right now, we don't have any duplicates, but it's not too difficult to pick up. Another Leafkin Druid, um, probably don't want multiple trackers, could get another Mammoth Spider. So the Pattern Matcher doesn't look great here, but it is a pretty good card in general. Just uh, we'll have to work for it a little bit to make sure it's good enough. Evolving Wilds, fixing our mana is definitely relevant, especially given that it can fetch up a Swamp. 
So I'm kind of leaning Evolving Wilds. If we already had some duplicates or if we had some cheaper commons that we can realistically get a second copy of, then a Pattern Matcher would be a little bit better. So here we could take Undead Servant, hoping to wield the other one. And that would give us two Undead Servants already. If we can get up to like three or four, then the Undead Servant becomes interesting. Um, second Epicure could be an option, but we already have like a bunch of fives. We don't have to play the Wolfkin Bond, but we still have Reclamation Spider Epicure at five. So they want infinite five drops. Tracker doesn't really get much better in multiples. Courser just gives us a solid 3-drop, which I guess our deck needs, since we have a bit of a hole in the 2 and 3-drop department here. So I guess I'll just take a Courser for Curve. Alright, don't have any synergies with the Wand, I don't think. No way of sacrificing it or killing creatures that are dealt damage. It can combine with Dread Presence or Siphon to take out something bigger. So, it seems medium. Like, Wand could be an okay sideboard card at the very least. So even if we don't main deck it against the one toughness heavy decks, it could be an okay sidebo sideboard option, could take a natural land for the sideboard. Axe is quite decent if we're a creature heavy deck. Uh, right now, it's unclear how many creatures we'll end up with, but black green is usually pretty creature heavy. Not a fan of Gift of Paradise, probably not gonna play the first copy we have unless there's a compelling reason. I think I'll take the axe. Right, probably just take the Vorse Claw, a random curve topper. Growth cycle in case we wield the season. So I'll take a speculative growth cycle. Alright, so it might be the next pack. So this was the pack with the Fan Lurker and Leaf Kindred. Wield the Leaf Kindred, so that's a gift. Uh, Pup would be okay in our deck, alongside like Bone Splinters. Um, if we had Overcome, this would become a little bit better. If we had a Season of Growth, then the Ferocious Pup would also be decent, letting us scry twice. If we had uh, Woodland Champion picking up a counter, the Ferocious Pup gets better. By itself, it's not an exciting card, despite being playable, but it is definitely one of those cards that has a ton of synergies in the set. But yeah, I think I'll just uh, take the second Leaf Kindred for now. And we did wheel the Season of Growth. So yeah, we don't have a ton of synergy with the Season, but it could improve if we pick up more Growth Cycles, if we pick up Feral Invocations, if we want to play the Wolfkin Bond, I guess. Of course, it does still let us cry, which is very useful, but usually for Season to be an exciting card, I'm looking for like two or three ways to uh, draw a card at least. So I think I'll probably still take the Season. Yeah, so we did get the Feral Invocation that I was talking about, which combos with uh, season of Growth, so that could be a fine pickup. Cutthroat's also fine, although the 4-drops are already doing okay, and we don't have Audacious Thief to combo with the Cutthroat, for example. I think I'll take the Invocation. Still not 100% to play it, but... We'll see. Alright, so heading into the last pack, what does our deck need? Some 3-drops, mostly. The two drops are looking good now with Double Leafkin, Fan Lurker, Season. Mostly just need some three mana creatures here to fill up our curve. Although if we have the turn to Leafkin then we can skip the three drops and go right up to four. A Sanitarium Skeleton would be great. More Bone Splinters to go with Sat Sanitarium Skeleton. Uh, Soul Salvage for kind of the grindy late game alongside Reclamation. Yeah, I mean, those are kind of the, the main ones. The Spider at 3 mana would be excellent, since that gives us another tool against Flyers, which we're a bit weak to at the moment. So we'll see. Alright, how about another Murder? Again, in the same pack as Blood for Bones. Wish we could take both. There's also a Central Courser. But I think we're probably still going to go with the Murder here, as much as I like Blood for Bones. And then, yeah... There's a chance we wheel something useful here between the Central Courser, the Cutthroat, the Loaming Shaman. There should be something useful that we can get back. Alright, another pretty interesting pack. Blood Soaked Altar could be quite amazing alongside Moldervine Reclamation. Since we turn the drawback of having to discard and paying life, 
we can kind of offset it with the reclamation. Do still need a bit of sacrifice fodder to go with the altar, and we still haven't seen any sanitarium skeletons. But it gives us a great kind of win condition, which our deck probably still needs. Um, otherwise, a vulture would be nice with cards like Gravedigger. But I think I'll take the altar. The Woodland Champion also worth mentioning, although I don't think we have any synergies with it. Didn't pick up any of those Ferocious Pops. I guess we have like the Wolfkin Bond that makes a token, but that's about it. So yeah, we'll take the altar. Now we're looking at two different uh, three drops. Vulture versus Central Courser. Probably want a Vulture. Uh, we only have Gravedigger to get creatures back from the graveyard at the moment. Could pick up a Soul Salvage later in this pack. I don't think we're wheeling the Blood for Bones, otherwise that would be a nice combo as well. But uh, yeah, seems good enough. Alright, this is a pretty stacked pack as well for us. A second season of growth. Another dual land, Silverback Shaman, Sorcerer of the Fang. Probably just gonna go with the Silverback at this point. It's just a solid 5 drop. Uh, can maybe replace Apicure, maybe replace Wolfkin Bonds. And between the Evolving Wilds and the Hollow, we already have quite a bit of mana fixing. And we don't have a ton of ways to target our own creatures. So the second season might be overkill. Plus, we might wheel it anyway. Alright, a lot of good options here. Man, we could have had like five or six Goblin Smugglers this draft. Ooh, we didn't even see the Sanitarium Skeleton. Man, there's like four cards I want here, five even. I wish I could take the entire pack. Probably gotta go with the Skeleton though. Plays great with our Vulture, plays great with Bone Splinters, it's great with Moldervine Reclamation. So it has a ton of built-in synergy, and it's just a good card by itself. Third Leafkin Druids would be amazing, giving us more ramp, a Rabbit Bite would be okay, now that we picked up some bigger creatures like Vorse Claw and Silverback Shaman, and then Scorpion. Also plays quite well alongside Graveyard Recursion, and alongside Rabbit Bite. Yeah, I don't think I want to count on Wheeling the Skeleton, since it's such an important part of our deck. And if we take Skeleton, then there's a chance we wheel one of these four green cards. Alright, now we can take our Soul Salvage, which we probably wanted to pick up. It's either that or second Growth Cycle. Don't know if we need Growth Cycle to win the game, to be honest. I think we can do without the Pump Spell Package and kind of win a grindier game with Soul Salvages instead. Since we have the Reclamation and the Altar now. Which is also, of course, a great combo with the Skeleton, which I failed to mention earlier. So we'll take Soul Salvage. Nothing here I want. Already have an axe, I doubt I want a second one. Uh, I guess I'll take a Raptor for the sideboard. And any combos with the Salvager of Ruin? Seems medium. Could just take a Natural End for the sideboard. Could take Cutthroats. Probably just take the Natural Hunt for the sideboard. Don't think I need the Cutthroats. Don't have a lot of ways to enable it if you look at our early creatures. Leaf Kindred doesn't have any power. Fun Lurker is about the only card that really works well with the Cutthroats. Alright, so this is kind of the first pack. We wield the Loaming Shaman, which I'll probably take. If we risk decking, this can prevent that. And otherwise it's just a 3 mana 3-2. Three, we might put it in the sideboard, we might main it. Probably don't need a second Wolfkin Bond. We might want a second Tracker. Alright, we wield the Courser, that's good. And we even wield the Season, although there's also Plummet and Plummet. Sometimes even main deckable, since there are a lot of Flyers in this format. And again, I don't know how heavy we need to go on the pump spell plan, since we seem to have enough like card advantage engines without the Season of Growth drawing us cards. So I think I like the plummets, especially since we're best of three here. Alright. So let's build our deck. So, not sure if we want to go deep on the pump spell plan. 
Let's kind of put our interactive and late game cards in one pile here. We could still play the season without playing a ton of pump spells. Could play a couple of them. Uh, one copy of Growth Cycle, not the most exciting. It's still playable. Um, in terms of removal, I've got Double Murder, Siphon, Bone Splinters, so that's nice. To go with the Bone Splinters, we have Skeleton, Fun Lurker. There's some other cards we could sacrifice, but those are the main cards we want to be sacking to the Bone Splinters. Uh, we could shave the second tracker pretty easily. How good is Apicure in our deck? It's mostly good with the Reclamation. And it is still a 5 mana 4 4, so it's okay. Yeah, Loaming Shaman shuffling some of our removal spells back could be pretty game winning as well. So I think I like the Loaming Shaman. It loses one toughness compared to a center courser, but it's not like we have a third center courser that we can main deck. So it's not really a discussion worth having at the moment. I think I like Vorsclaw just to have something big at the top end that we can reanimate with our Gravedigger and our Soul Salvage if the game kind of drags on. I think Growth Cycle's cuttable, and then the Wolfkin Bonds might be cuttable too. And then just play Feral Invocation as kind of a combo trick that has a bit of synergy with the uh, Season. Could also cut the Season of Growth, although the Scry 1 is just valuable by itself with all the creatures we're playing. Um, and then we also have Marauder's Axe as kind of a grindy late game way to pump our creatures. Uh, even though it doesn't trigger the Season of Growth. Need to make a couple more cuts. Not sure what those should be, maybe just one tracker. I'm not entirely sh sold on the Apicure of Bloods. The other fives look good. I think I like one Vorse Claw when we have a double Leafkin Druid for ramp. Yeah, we could cut the Axe, could cut the Apicure. So let me put all the maybes in one pile. I guess the Invocation's also a maybe. Season might be a maybe, but I think it's probably worth it. Even without a ton of synergy. Wish we had picked up a Rabbit Bite, but all the Rabbit Binds appeared alongside a ton of other cards we needed. So yeah, it's something like this. I think we probably need 17 lands in this deck, since we do want to get up to 5. Don't need 18, since we do have double Leafkin Druid as well. I need to make 2 cuts out of these 4 cards, I think. If we cut uh, Season, then Feral Invocation also loses a bit of value, so that's an easy cut. Uh, if we keep Season, then it makes sense to also keep the Feral Invocation. So we can either go for the pump spell package with the season, or we can go with like a Apicure and an Axe. And an Axe also gets better if we play Apicure since we'll have an extra creature to equip. I guess I like the pump spell package a little bit more. And just go with this. So these are kind of our early plays. Decent number of threes, fours, fives. And then our late game engine is mostly Altar plus Reclamation, or just one of them. Uh, Soul Salvage, Gravedigger, Dread Presence. Got a decent number of removal spells. And then Invocation is kind of a combo trick as well. Plays well with Center Coursers. And then Tracker can also give us a nice late game engine. Seems okay. Should have enough ways to spend our mana in the late game between Skeletons, Trackers, and uh, cards like Soul Salvage, getting back creatures that I think 17 lands is okay, plus we can scry lands to the bottom with Season of Growth as well. And then our mana base, um, probably favoring Swamps for the Dread Presence. Do need double black for Fen Lurker early and double black for Murder, so that's another reason to want an extra Swamp, despite needing green for the Leafkin early as well. Could potentially shave one forest for an extra Swamp, don't want to get too greedy since we still want to cast our Leafkin Druids in time. Usually for like consistently casting our two drops we would want nine sources. It is true that we mostly just need single green and then Leafkin gives us a second green we need. Being able to cast murder early is pretty important and it helps with uh, the Dread Presence as well. Be on the play. And yeah, I mean, we've added even more swamps to the deck, so gotta believe here. So we have nine swamps, an evolving wilds, and a jungle hollow, so pretty likely to find one before too late. 
Blue green. Ooh, reclamation. Spider can block the sprites. Got murders for days. Although if they play something like a Boreal Elemental, we might need a bit more mana before we can murder. And Frostlings. Center course for great draw, so we don't have to waste a murder and can just try and block instead. If they attack into the courser, then we suspect they have some pump spells, and then we can take it for now and then next turn set up murder. Octoprophets lines up quite well against our center courser. But we just want to try and set up a board stall here and then try and leverage this Moldervine Reclamation. I'm still going to play the Spider first. Just to make sure that this uh, sprite is contained. But then next turn we can start leveraging our Moldervine Reclamation. Alright, let's run it out there. So now finding Bone Splinters to go with the Fun Lurker would be great. Blue Green's not actually going to kill many of our creatures. So we don't expect them to necessarily trigger the Reclamation often, but at some point creatures will trade and then uh, Reclamation will draw cards. Alright, so here we have a decision. We could murder the Weaponsmith before it grabs anything. Um, although at the moment, Bow, File, those cards aren't too scary, unless they get, like, multiples. So we could just go Season into Center Courser, Scry towards whatever we need, which seems slightly better, and just save the Murders for more problematic creatures. Since, again, like, if our opponent gets a Vile or a Bow, I don't think we're upset if they kill Fenlurker for free with a Bow, we get to draw a card with a Reclamation anyway. And here we're looking for Altar, we're looking for Bone Splinters, Sanitarium Skeletons. A season of Growth does not let us draw cards from uh, Bone Splinters since it doesn't target our creature. It just sacrifices it as an additional cost. That's a Rude Meter Golem right there, killing our Reclamation. Still don't get to see it in action. So had we murdered a Weaponsmith, they would have been unable to cast it, but sooner or later they would have. Well, it's uh, two lands bottomed already, so that feels nice. Yeah, don't really see any great attacks here, like I could murder the Stone Golem. But now that the Reclamation's gone, trading off creatures isn't as impressive. I would rather just save them to maybe turn into 5-5s five with Altar. We do have a Loaming Shaman that could shuffle Reclamation back into our deck at some point, so it's not gone forever. Opponent gets a bow, so they could have multiple bows in the deck, in which case that could potentially become a problem if they have like two or three bows. But for now it doesn't do much. So we'll see whether or not we'll end up regretting not murdering the Weaponsmith right away. But it feels like we want to save murders for bigger things. Three lands bottomed already. So even though we're not going to draw cards with Season, just not drawing lands is basically like drawing cards. Have a ton of mana thanks to these Leafkin Druids. Tracker would also be a reasonable draw. Alright, opponent does have another bow. Right, double bow, if they have triple bow, that's definitely kind of danger zone. A double bow is still manageable, but we don't know whether or not they have a third bow, so we still don't know whether we should kill this weaponsmith. Alright, I mean, this still doesn't get past the uh, spider. Alright, so siphoning the Weaponsmith doesn't feel as bad as murdering. I could just siphon the sprites in case they somehow deal with the spider. Probably want to use my mana here on the siphon, trying to figure out what the best target is. 
It feels like I should just kill the sprites. If they do have more bows in the deck, eventually they'll draw them. And then if they somehow deal with the spider, then evasive creature plus triple bow is kind of an issue. So we want to deal with the evasive creature eventually. At some point we can think about sending in the Fenlurker. Alright, they do have a third bow. Well, now we know. Or maybe a vial. Alright, so two bows and a vial. That's fine. No reason to murder anything end of turn, I don't think. No, that's a good draw, since that could save a creature from bow and vile damage, as well as maybe getting in an attack, and then with the season it draws a card. I don't think I'm, like, aggressively jamming here. I think I'm just gonna be patient and save the invocation, and then maybe the opponent tries to make a move with double bow plus vile, and then we get them with the feral invocation. Like, we have some cards that give us inevitability. If we find an altar, we can start making 5-5 five, five demons. Uh, Shaman could shuffle back some of these cards. So I'm not too worried about the late game. So I think we let them attack. Eh, no attacks. Should I play my lands? I didn't think so, in case of altar. Have infinite mana anyway. Once we do find altar, I'll have to think whether or not I want to play the land first to play around convolute. Yeah, land does mean I get to double murder, that's the upside here. But if we draw Drat Presence, I also want to save the Swamp. Evolving Wilds. We do have two lands at the bottom that I don't necessarily want to draw. Three lands even. So shuffling with Evolving Wilds seems questionable. Now I could consider playing out the Swamp. Since we can always get value from a Drat Presence if we draw it. So a bit of a waiting game. If I didn't have a Loaming Shaman in my deck, I would be a little bit more nervous. Okay, just gonna say go. Good old-fashioned uh, board stall here. All right, now that could be an issue. Opponent might have been sandbagging a bunch of pump spells, and now they get to go off. But Murder is pretty good at punishing pump spells. We've got 20 cards remaining, bottom three are lands. Within those 17 cards, we've got an Altar. Or Loaming Shaman, Bone Splinter, Sanitarium Skeleton, Dread Presence, Vorse Claw. So if I play the Vorse Claw, then I can still pay for Convolute. Probably want to keep up some black mana. Vulture. Vulture is interesting. If Vulture mills Loaming Shaman, that could be pretty bad for us. And Vulture also just dies to the Vile, so it's not like we can pressure them with it. I think I actually bottomed that. If I had a Gravedigger, it might be different, but yeah, the fact that Vulture just dies, and if we get unlucky and it mills some of our key cards, like Shaman or Gravedigger, then things could get a little bit messy. I think I would rather bottom. When games stall out like this and it might come down to needing every single card in our deck. Then Vulture is a card that requires a bit of thought before we play it. If it's just like early in the game, then we shouldn't worry about what we mill since it's kind of random. But when we're kind of in this stage of the game where we kind of need to rely on a few key cards in our deck, we don't want to risk uh, losing those to the random mill, especially when they have a vial that can easily answer it. If they didn't have the vial, then there would be more reason to keep it. A rabbit bites. Stone Golem versus Mammoth Spider. So it doesn't kill it. But I guess Vile could eventually kill it. So I could either Feral Invocation or Murder. If my Invocation goes up to 7 Toughness, takes 4. Then Vile plus Double Bow still kills it. They could easily have a Counterspell here. I think I still make him use it. Alright, no counterspells. So that's dead. 
And they could have been expecting the first murder, but maybe not the second or the invocation as well. I don't want 4 damage applied to the Mammoth Spider, otherwise it dies to the Vial of Dragonfire. That's why we had to do it in response. I could send a Vorse Claw, how do they block? Given that we have a Gravedigger, seems fine. And we're fine with any trades, basically. I'm not gonna try and force the Vorse Claw through with Invocation unless it lines up particularly well. Still gonna hold on to the lands, I think. Just pass a turn. Alright, still gets blocked by the spider, although then double bow or vile can potentially mess with that, although invocation could also come in handy. So I don't see a reason to murder right away. I could just try and block plus invocation, and then if they try and pump their elemental, I can murder. Plus, the Gravedigger can also get the Spider back. So I think I'll just untap, attack with Vorsclaw again. And then we'll basically be in the same spot with maybe the Boreal Elemental, trying to do some attacking. Forest I can probably afford to play. Still keeps enough cards in hand for Altar potentially. Let's see how much mana do we have right now? Right now we have 10 mana, so 5 for Murder on Boreal, 3 for Invocation. So even if I play the land, I can't play around Convolute in any significant way, so it doesn't make a huge difference. But you never know. That's uh, a good argument. I could consider playing the Evolving Wilds, but just not sacrificing it in case we want to if we hit a Dread Presence, get two Swamps in the same turn for four damage. Maybe I should have uh, considered that and just played out the Evolving Wilds without sacrificing it instead of playing the Forest, since that's an easy way of killing Boreal Elemental, for example. So attacks, double ping Spider. Yeah, it still dies to the Vial, but I'm okay with that, given the Gravedigger. And it does make them use the Vial as well. That's fine. And a Paralysis, fair enough. So now we've got a good target for the Bone Splinters, and then we could Gravedigger back the Vorse Claw in the long term. But again, we're not in a hurry. Opponent's not really doing much. Soul Salvage also pretty good. Can Gravedigger back Mammoth Spider. Play Mammoth Spider. Nothing to really Bone Splinters at the moment. I'm wondering whether we should play the Spider or just keep up more mana. Bottom. Just play this and say go. Yeah, let's just be patient. I'm not in a hurry to play Spider. And I'm not gonna sack the wilds, but having it in place useful once we draw the Dread Presence. So 15 cards, we know the bottom five. Ooh, Risen Reef. Alright. It's kind of an issue. If they play another elemental, I might murder it. Opponent's got 10 cards remaining. I mean, they could just deck themselves before it, it really matters. Or I could murder the Risen Reef and then uh, not let them draw an extra card. But like, how are they beating us? They're gonna deck first. We have a spider that blocks this, so I don't think we care. Yeah, if they have Loaming Shaman, then I guess we keep playing. But they actually haven't shown many cards that can uh, deal with cards like Vorsclaw and Mammoth Spider multiple times. 
They're starting to get a bit more aggressive since they feel the pressure of the library size here. Still have murder up just in case something goes wrong. Can just double block spider. If they go for a pump spell, we murder. Fun lurker, I can pump uh, twice here. So that's another 3 3 essentially. Um, I can't pump fun lurker twice and murder, is something we have to keep in mind. I think I just double block here and then just take six. Seems like the safest play. Alright, there we go. Took us a while. So, can play Dread Presence, sack Evolving Wilds, get a Swamp, play a Swamp, that's 4 damage. Could also just go upstairs, probably better to finish off the creatures. Can kill Cloudkin for sure, and then maybe just a Risen Reef. Skeleton, kinda wanna draw that. I could also draw first with the, the Swamp I play, and then shuffle away with Evolving Wilds afterwards and just killing the Cloudkin, let them keep the Risen Reef. I think that's okay. I don't have to s fetch now, I can wait. Since we also have Murder to back it up. I would like to play the Spider though, if possible. So this seems fine. Play Spider and then... I guess I didn't play around Convolute, but it clearly showed that they didn't have it earlier. Swamp seems fine. And then just say go, keeping up Murder and Evolving Wilds. Yeah, this is a pretty grindy game. Crasher... sure, I don't think we need to respond. They're free to draw cards with Risen Reef here. We should be able to keep up with all the extra cards with the cards we have in hand. And the Dread Presence. Card we don't want to see is Loming Shaman. Ooh. Well, that's gonna force us to make a move. I guess I'll kill the Cloudkin Seer. And I might have to murder something as well here. Let's see how much damage we're taking. I could have murdered Octoprophet, so the Fen Lurker could have still chumped. But I'm thinking we probably want to murder something else, if at all. I can just save the murder or murder the, the Crasher end of turn. Just to be mana efficient now that we have to replay all these uh, spells. And then. I mean, we still have the Dread Presence if we draw more Swamps, we can gain more life that way. Still have a couple Swamps in the deck. And the 4-3 Trampler is a little scarier, I think, than any of the 3-3s at the moment. It's mostly that pump spells with the Trampler could be kind of scary. Alright, so now we just be, need to make sure we can spend all our mana, put up our defenses as quickly as possible. Try and make T tap for two mana, so we want to play creature before we consider bone splinters in the Vorse Claw. But I think we don't need to bone splinters quite yet. Otherwise I should have murdered one of the attackers and then bone splinters on the Crasher. But I think just playing a bunch of creatures should be good enough. So I guess we'll lead with the Skeleton. Altar. The problem with Altar is that we're down to seven now. So is it still good enough? Or do we just dig for Swamps or Loaming Shaman? I don't know, it's close. Let's bottom it, I guess. And then uh, just play as much stuff as possible, keep as many blockers as possible. So I could just go Spider, Courser, and then keep up Leafkins as blockers. Or I could run out uh, Dread Presence as well. Probably just leave Leafkins as blockers. Swamp on top, and then next turn we can Dread Presence. 
Nah, not sure if this is the best way to go about it. If they have a second bounce spell here, then uh, could be in trouble. Attempts this. Alright, glad we still held on to the bone splinters. So hopefully that's their last relevant card. They have five cards remaining. We have 11 plus a Loaming Shaman to shuffle. So they're attacking with Octoprophet here, presumably. They can deal one to Course or one to Spider. But then we just block Lynx with the Druid, so that's fine. Can trade and chump. Step one, probably play Dread Presence, play Swamp, try to use Leafkins for as much mana as possible. What are we doing with the Dread Presence trigger? Probably just kill Frostlings. And then do I need these for extra mana before I bone splinters? I could soul salvage back the spider, for example. Although, I guess I can float the mana, bone splinters, and get back force claw as well. That's yeah, probably fine. So kill this, sag this. Soul salvage. Get back. I guess I could also get back Gravedigger for the extra grindiness. Not sure if that's necessary since the Gravedigger just dies to the bow. Nah, let's just skip the Gravedigger. Alright, we got there. It's pretty good against the uh, bounce three cards. Don't hit it. Uh, Plummet seems pretty good against the Boreal and the Atemsis. What don't we like? Vultures, medium, since they have the Cloudkin that trades for it, Double Bow that can kill it, and Vile that can kill it. So just two toughness things are pretty bad. Game can be pretty long, so Loaming Shaman still seems worth it. Everything else seems okay. So what's the last cut here? Uh, could cut a land on the draw, if we're feeling greedy. Invocation still seems serviceable. Uh, could consider the natural end to kill some of the equipment, but that seems medium. Another Force Claw could be fine. I guess they did show us Sleep Paralysis as well, so that's a reason to maybe want a natural end anyway. Don't know if that's too reactive. Don't hate the idea of another Force Claw, just as a big body that lines up quite well. And then maybe cut the Tracker, since it's kind of slow. And how good is Siphon? They have a lot of 3 toughness things, so it's still... Okay, maybe just got the invocation anyway now that they have seen it. I'll try this. Yeah, I don't really want to disenchant the meteor golem. That seems like a bad value proposition. Sleep analysis is the best target for it, probably. Fine hand. I guess I'll wild since we don't want to draw more lands. Probably get the Swamp in case of an early Fen Lurker. And then we can keep Swamps in hand for now, in case of Dread Presence. I guess they also showed a Season of Growth, but they actually didn't play many Pump Spells. So, while this Cry is annoying, I don't know if we want to Disenchant just for a Season that Scries a bunch. I don't know, maybe Sleep Paralysis plus Season is good enough. Yeah, they had one rabbit bite, I guess, so that's combos with the season. I don't think we've seen a second rabbit bite. Ooh, opponents on the mill plan with the uh, denizen. Maybe a transformative uh, sideboard plan, but uh, it's not going to work out against Loaming Shaman if we can get that. I think I'm okay playing the Dread Presence here. There's not much that punishes us. Rabbit bite doesn't do it. Paralysis, we don't care. I 
And if they mill the Loaming Shaman, there's still Gravedigger and Soul Salvage to get it back. So yeah, we'll reconsider the Disenchant for game 3 here. Keeps one card on top. Siphon's pretty good. So I can just kill the Octoprophet so we can get in there. And then draw with the, the Swamp, I, th I think. Could also just play the Forest and postpone the decision. In case we need to kill creatures with the Swamps. Because our next play is scripted, we're just going to play Vorsclaw. So the reason to play Swamp is if we somehow fear losing the Dread Presence, but that's not happening since the uh, Rabbit Bite no longer works. So it might be better off waiting in case I play a creature I want to kill instead of drawing cards with the Dread Presence here. It feels weird not to get value, but it might be correct. Why not kill the Denison? Because the Denison doesn't do anything unless... It mills us out, and I don't think it's going to mill us out given the board and our hand. But, you know, might end up being relevant later, but still have a bunch of removal we could draw if it ends up being relevant. Stone Golem gets him for two. Alright, so I could still attack and then use a two damage to trade for the Stone Golem, that's not great. Uh, that's also better play once we play Reclamation. So I guess for now we'll draw and play Vorsclaw. So they have the Bounce 3 in their deck, I don't think we should respect it this turn. Just play the Vorsclaw. Could also start going face with the damage, I don't think that's the best approach for now. Link steps down Force Claw. That's fine. Mills us a bit. Swamp can kill the Lynx pretty easily. We'll see how aggressive they get with the Stone Golem. Alright. So now we kind of got punished for not playing the Swamp earlier, which could have drawn us an extra card basically. So that was not ideal. But the reasoning, I think, made sense. If we don't draw a ton of swamps, then we want to save the swamps to maybe kill creatures instead. Given that we have Veil for the Bound spell, I think I'm probably still fine attacking. Put them to 8. Then these are both lethal next turn, so they need to keep back some stuff. Sure. Let's just trade for the Denizen. Altar could be good. Could be a reason to hold lands. Also a reason to play lands since we want to be able to play it and keep up Veil. Alright, so they still need a permanent answer for Vorsclaw here. Well, that'll do it. So, doesn't help against the Meter Golem since it's only from blue and black. So that probably goes after the Vorse Claw. But then we get to draw a card at least. So I can play both, but then I don't get to keep up Veil of Summer, which could be bad. I can go Season, Spider, keep up Veil. Because what happens if I go Spider, Courser, then... Let's say if they have the Bounce spell, then we're taking 9, and we're probably close to dead. And if they play Paralysis, then they tap down Spider, and then... I guess we can trade for Golem, take 4, which isn't the worst. I think I like keeping up Veil, though. Alright, it's been a weird game. Kind of regretting missing out on that Dread Presence trigger earlier, but might still be okay. Aha, uh -huh, they have their own Force Claw. I see how it is. Well, we do have two murders as decent answers. That also works.
And do we want a Looming Shaman? I guess, kind of. Get back a Vorse Claw, Dread Presence, Gravedigger, Siphon. Seems good enough. That's annoying. Now we're not at a stage where we can just ignore Risen Reef, sadly. But it could run away with the game. Alright. Points at 11, we're at 12. They have a Risen Reef in play, one card in hand. We both have Season, we have Reclamation. So it's not looking too bad if they don't have more elementals. Can go Silverback plus Loaming Shaman. Probably Loaming first so we can shuffle and then scry. And then uh, we can start setting up Altar on the following turns. So we want a Shaman first. So we don't waste the scry basically. So shuffle and then scry. So Gravedigger, Siphon. Presence, Force Claw, probably Veil as well. Don't think I put any swamps back. Yeah, I'll keep that. Cloudkin, that's an elemental. Not a rabbit bite, perhaps. Well, not a very grindy game here. So we get to untap, and then if we draw land, we can play altar and murder. So is that the play? I can sack Loaming Shaman, turn it into a 5-5 flyer. If I attack with Vorse Claw, I mean, I could murder their Vorse Claw, attack with mine, but it just trades. Don't know if that's necessary. Probably just better to keep up murder and then make a 5-5, which blocks the Cloudkin Seer. And then I can decide whether or not it's necessary to kill Risen Reef if they play more Elementals, for example, or if we kill the Vorse Claw after all. Don't think we care about a Weaponsmith too much. And I can just discard a Centaur Courser, that doesn't matter too much. I guess we also get to draw from the Reclamation anyway. That seems good. Alright. Pass a turn. Start making an army of 5-5 demons. Reclamation offsets a bit of the life loss and the card disadvantage. Dread Presence means swamps are good draws, still have a murder in hand. So don't hit our position. If they have the bounce 3 here, then we could be dead. So kind of want to draw into our veil again as soon as possible. Double bow. That's fine. So I can play Gravedigger, get back Corsair, and then sack Digger to the altar. I guess Spider also works. And Fun Lurker, do we care? I mean, it's cheap sack fodder for the altar, so it's not bad. Question is, do we need to like aggressively dig for the Veil of Summer again? I think it might be better here. I think we've got the value angle covered. I just want to make sure we don't get cheesed out. I might even discard the Dread Presence, although that seems kind of bad. Although we don't have a ton of swamps left. Let's see, six. I think we have like three swamps left in the deck, four maybe. So not too many. Let's attack. Yeah, I think I'm okay discarding the Dread Presence. 
See what we draw first before we commit to the spider. Or if we want to keep a murder. Alright, Veil of Summer, great. That's what I needed. Leafkin Druids can probably go. And I will just keep up Veil plus murder. Points at 6, so if they don't deal with the 5-5s, five they're dead. Since we can always murder the Cloudkin as well. Well, we brought it in for a reason. And we got to use it twice in one game. GG's. So, aggressively digging for Veil of Summer turned out to be the play. So yeah, that was a pretty satisfying match of magic. Our decisions mattered, sideboarding mattered. That's how magic's supposed to be. I get the appeal of Bessa 1, but you just don't get the depth you get in games like this. Your opponent played great as well. Fine hand. Keep Swamps for Dread Presence. Well, a Dread Presence is going to be real good if we find it. Alright, do I attack? Basically trading 2 damage for 1 damage. I think I'll uh, stay back. For now at least. Next turn I can attack. Yeah, best of three traditional draft isn't ranked, sadly. First, see if this resolves before I commit to an attack. The advantage of attacking first, if they have a pump spell, we could murder. If we play silver back and this gets bone to ashed or convoluted, we're a little sad. Could also do nothing. I actually think I'm gonna do nothing. Opponent keeping up for mana is a little suspicious. If this silver back gets countered, we don't have anything going on. And we can still use our mana efficiently end of turn with a murder. And I don't want to trade 2 damage for 1 damage, since we're going to try and win a longer game. Alright, it's a good target for murder. Although that being an opponent's deck, especially in Busta 3, where we have to face it multiple times potentially, is uh, bad news. Because the fact that it shuffles back means that it's never gone forever. Let's get the silver back out there. I guess now I can attack first. Doesn't really matter. Yeah, well, that's what I want. So now I know not to play out the swamp. Oh, come on. <laughs> Not again. Uh, so now we need to basically try and race with the, the silver bank, I guess. Well, there goes that plan. So silver bank can't attack this turn. I guess we'll start drawing some cards. I mean, at this point we need Murder, number 2, Bone Splinters. I don't think we can keep a Mammoth Spider. Alright, we're digging. Oh yeah, Plummet's coming in for sure. All right, then. Loaming Shaman can shuffle back murder. 
Still dead on board. I guess Silver Bank could draw us a card. So the way I survive is Loaming Shaman, Shuffle Bank, Murder Attack with Silver Bank, have Silver Bank trade somehow. But the fact that we're Shuffling Bank Murder makes it less likely their opponent uh, is going to block here. Could have also tried to draw into a single Murder. Not sure what gives us better odds. Could have also scryed first with the skeleton. Alright, well. It was worth a shot. Well, plummet seems good. Two mana to trade for a seven drop. Otherwise, could have hoped to draw the murders and the bone splinters. What is going on? <laughs> Jeez. All right, well, I guess some decks are just better than others. A pure soul can inspire others. I'm pretty sure I joined the limited queue. All right, well, I don't think we're winning this one, but we'll try. So plummet's definitely coming in. Anything else? Maybe we just need to cheese him out with the Mind Rot. Fail doesn't do much. Force Claw could be okay. It's just a big dude to pressure them. Anything else? Like, they're not killing our stuff, so Soul Salvage seems medium. I'll keep the Gravedigger. Invocation could be cuttable. Since we don't really have the early game pressure that the Invocation can back up. Altar seems okay, it's just making a bunch of flyers. Reclamation also seems quite bad since they're not killing our stuff. And then I could bring in uh, an additional Vorse Claw just to try and beat them down. Alright, I think I'll give this a shot. Yeah, Altar might be too slow, but at least it's a way to make flyers against the blue white flyers deck. Seems good enough to me. Be on the play. Pretty slow hand. So this might be a Mulgan. Yeah. Alright, I guess we'll keep this. Uh, Vulture plays well with the Gravedigger. Corsair gives us early pressure, so I'm not sure what to put on the bottom here. Definitely need a lands. Could just be bottom Corsair and then go Vulture into Gravedigger. Even though Corsair might apply a bit more pressure. Got to make up for the mulligan a little bit. Alright, so we'll have a target for Gravedigger. Just need a land now. So I guess they also have a bit of an aura theme in their deck. Can punish that with murder at least. Do I want to play a loaming shaman first? Probably just murder that right away. Waiting has a disadvantage of running into like a god's willing or a negate. Chaplain. Well, that one we can block. So what do I shuffle back? Definitely the murder. It's probably it. Keep these in the graveyard for Gravedigger. Could shuffle some lands back since we actually want to draw lands here. Maybe that's actually reasonable. Sure. Makes it less likely we draw the murder, but we kind of need to hit some land drops. Evolving Wilds comes into play tapped, and I kind of want to be in a spot where we can Gravedigger or Siphon. 
They even have the sideboard hate here, protection from black. Now they can block with Pegasus and Sprite if they want to. But uh, let's let's mind roll them here. What are you working with, opponents? Well, that's one way to get rid of some rares. So they have Life Chanter, a Jani, plus two other flying rares. Uh, probably not worth it to attack. They could also exile our graveyard, I guess, with the Apostle. I didn't think about that. Well, they probably should have waited until we cast something targeting the graveyard. Because now we can just get back uh, Tracker before they exile more stuff. Let's get in there. All right, so we've got something going. We answered a couple of the opponent's bombs already. They don't have triple blue if they find the blue cavalier. They're pretty far from casting Sephara. Probably just better off playing Tracker and then attacking with just a Shaman for now. Final Lurker is tempting too, in case they have Cavaliers at our last card, but I want to be able to block the Apostle first. And if it's a Sephara, they still wouldn't be able to play it, even if they draw land. Now they go Island into Cavalier, we're gonna be sad. I think I do want to play Spider before I play a Fun Lurker here. And then I'm probably just going to pass. And then next turn I can try and get that last card, which is maybe a Sephara or a Cavalier. And then we can start altering to take over. Now playing Fun Lurker is not great since they could just discard whatever non bomb rare they have. It's pretty likely that they have either Cavalier or Sephara at this point. I guess I can just play a Dread Presence and pass. Alright, so... It's not Cavalier. It might be Sephara and they just want to start playing out lands now. So I don't know what the second card is. I mean, it could literally be Cavalier plus Sephara. I guess we'll find out. No, never mind. Eternal Isolation, so their last card could still be either one of those rares. I guess they could also be holding the Aerial Assault that they've shown us in a previous game and our creatures just weren't tapped, but I guess I'm fine if they kill Spider or Shaman here. And this doesn't attack since it gets blocked by Chaplain, so gains in one, but these two are fine to attack, I'm okay with any trades. So yeah, it's either Cavalier, Sephara, or like an Aerial Assault. Oh yeah, that Mind Roll definitely saved us. Didn't think we would have beaten uh, a Jani and the Life Chanter. Is it Sephara? It is. Yeah, that's gonna be difficult. Although a single 5-5 five five plus Spider can block Sephara, so we're kind of stable. And then we'll just need to eventually find a murder to kill Sephara. Or I can start burning them out with uh, Dread Presence, but first things first, we need to make a demon, otherwise Sephara just attacks for free. I maybe should have played Swamp first. 
yeah, there was a mistake, because if I draw into a murder, then I probably do that instead of playing altar. I mean, I guess this costs us one life, so it's not free to draw a card, but it puts an extra land in play, which could be useful. Although, we also have to pay two for altars, so I guess I'll just discard Swamp here. So we've got a double block on Sephara, so hopefully that doesn't change. And then we can slowly build up a giant army of demons until we find an answer. That one I'll discard. I can activate Tracker and then still activate Altar in case we find some other Sacrifice Fodder. That's a pretty good one. So we can discard Skeleton. Sack Fanlurker. And do I play the Jungle Hollow? I don't think I do. So now what? I guess I could have also considered attacking, and then if they blocked the 5-5 five five, I could have finished off Sephara, but then they also would have gained 7. Guess I'll just draw. Well, that'll do it. Oof, wow. Got away with one there. So, life chanter as well. Yeah, I mean, I guess we'll have to be real careful with how we use our murders, since they have a lot of bombs we need to answer. Mind Rot was pretty clutch, that game. Yeah, let's just hope to cheese them out again. Alright, so this hand needs a swamp. I don't think I can mulligan. Like, we have 10, 11 black sources in the deck, we just need one of them. And then we get Season of Growth plus Skeleton to Scry. Any land lets a Shaman alongside Season to Scry. And then Bone Splinters plus Skeleton, pretty key. Sentinel, that's fine. Soul attack. Let's just play the Leafkin, I think. Bottom that, looking for swamps, murders, and uh, good cards, I guess. Altar. I think we're pretty far away from Altar. Would love to keep it since it's the way we are eventually gonna have to win the game. But we're missing, I guess, just a single swamp. Because Leafkin will pretty soon make double green. And Skeleton plus Altar is kind of the combo here. I think I'm supposed to keep it. Like, I can play Shaman to make more mana next turn. So we'll play Spider soon and then we're just a swamp away from Altar. Plummets. I mean, plummets not really necessary if the mammoth spider sticks. Don't want to plummet a cloudkin or a sentinel. And we have bone splinters for Sephara if that comes down in a couple turns. They're pretty far away from the cavaliers, I think we bought them for now. Just look for lands. But next turn, at the very least, we can play spider thanks to Leafkin making double green. So we'll take a bit of damage. Hopefully not too much. Ouch. Well, that's quite a combo. 
Now we're super dead. Yeah, maybe I should bone splinters, it just feels like I need to keep bone splinters for their bombs. Mill first and then scry. Alright, so we get to play a spider next turn. I think I can still afford to hang on to the bone splinters. I've got blockers for the sentries. Apostle doesn't matter. We won't get to activate Alter a lot here, sadly, since we're already down to eight. But uh, hopefully we still get to activate it once or twice. We'll have to watch out for this Apostle with the skeleton interaction. So they have triple blue for Cavalier now. No attacks, that's promising. Alright, so I can finally Alter, or I can Vorse Claw. The problem with Alter is that I can't sack Skeleton with Apostle in place, since I don't want to get it exiled. So it might be better to Vorse Claw and wait on Alter for a turn. If they answer Spider, then we're taking a bunch of unnecessary damage instead of having a blocker back. But, uh... We'll try this for now. Yeah, they could have been aggressive with the sentries just to pump up the flyers. Now, the problem is their opponent has a lot of good top decks. We know how many bombs they have, and we just have a single bone splinters to try and deal with it. Good answer to our Vorse Claw. Could have also answered the 5 5. Murder. Now, that's a good one. Gives us a bit of extra insurance. So they can activate this three times. Can't really fight over it with the skeleton. I mean, I don't want to discard anything, so probably just going to use a tracker here and take it from there. And then whatever we find with the tracker, we can discard to the altar maybe in the future. Don't have any good attacks. Yeah, this apostle is actually quite annoying. The pro black is manageable, but exiling our graveyard is actually pretty good. Yeah, we basically need to have more mana than the opponent, so we can skeleton back, skeleton um, in response to the Apostle, but like if they have three activations, we would need like 12 mana to get back skeleton from the graveyard, which isn't happening. Silverback was a good draw. I guess I'll keep land in hand to discard to the altar. Just play Shaman for now. Yeah, I guess I'll keep another Vorse Claw. Just gonna go big. We've got answers for their bombs. Does Shaman get an attack in? Can probably wait a turn. So we can attack alongside Vorse Claw, make it more difficult for them to block. Corsair is pretty medium. Alright, there's Cavalier number one. The Brainstorm is also so good here when we're, we're basically forced to make them shuffle by killing Cavalier. I mean, I could just make a 5-5 five, five to block. Loading up on the Cloudkins here. Yeah, that's kind of an issue. So that hits for six. 
If we take six, we can no longer activate altar. So I think I got a chump with a vulture. Yeah, now I can bone splinters now that he points tapped out and get back skeleton. So that's kind of the key here. So bone splinter sack skeleton, return skeleton. And then I still have murder if I play a land. So I could kill both big flyers if I wanted to. Do I want to kill a cavalier before attacking for some reason? I kind of want to keep the pressure, so trading shaman for cavalier wouldn't be great. I kind of expect him to take it anyway. And they might load up some counters onto the flyers. So I think I attack first. Murder could also mess up a double block situation. Alright, that's good. So no need to murder here, just gonna kill both, trample over a bit, get rid of this annoying apostle. We'll probably see a few counters go onto the flyers, and then we can kill both. Yeah, they're diversifying at least, so they're not completely playing into our removal, but the spider can block sentinel as well, so... I guess kill Cavalier first, give them less information. And do I murder now or do I wait? Haven't really seen any instance that punishes for waiting, but then again... Could also alter instead of murder here, since we don't need to get Skeleton back right now since the Apostle's gone. But then if they deal with a 5-5, five five, then we're probably forced to like chum block, which seems bad. So it's probably better to murder. So I'll play my land so I can murder plus return skeleton end of turn. Let them untap in case they do something that plays into the murder. Hopefully no counter spells. Alright, well that's an issue. So now I need to probably still murder the seer. And then try and make enough blockers with altar. If I murder Sephara, then what am I doing this turn? I need to chump Cloudkin, and then I still take like four or five down to three. And at three life, I don't think we can stabilize. So I need to murder this Cloudkin, sadly. They get to attack for two damage for free, basically. Unless they're afraid of a plummet. Because if we had a plummet here, we would get to eat a sprite for free. Sadly, we don't. Yeah, we kind of need to top deck here. I don't think altar is good enough. Might survive for a turn, but long term it's not enough since... Imagine we make a 5-5 five five here, we're down to 4. Sprite and Sentinel are lethal, so if we double block Sephara, that doesn't work. If we attack with Vor Squad, they just block with a Sentinel, so that doesn't accomplish anything. Anything we can find with a Tracker, that's useful. I mean, I guess we just need to scry here and hope there's something useful on top. That's not useful. It's also not useful. Probably keep land in hand. Alright, well... We're not that on board, but we're not in a good spot. No, we didn't have blocks on the 6 power Cloudkin. Or, well, 6 toughness Cloudkin. Because it had uh, Gauntlets plus Aegis. So, if we try to murder Sephara, then Spider still wouldn't have killed the Cloudkins here. If we attack with Vor Squad, they just block with the Sentinel. I mean, I guess you can make the case that they could play around a uh, Plummet on Sephara. So I guess it's kind of free to attack with the Vor Squad there, you're right. Alright, so Dread Presence, what does that do for us? Opponent did not attack, so I guess they're playing it safe. So I guess we're still in the game.
go to find one of our answers to Sephara. And in the meantime, we can try and deal with this Ajani. Killing the token is also reasonable, but my thinking here is that we can just uh, kill Ajani over the course of two turns with two Dread Presence activations. And then just sacrifice like a Loaming Shaman that doesn't do much. Could have also played Skeleton for the Scry, but I think we want to keep Swamp so we can kill a Jani. Siphon. I mean, gaining three is kind of useful, but I think we would rather dig towards our actual answers. Because now I don't think our opponent has any good attacks, now that we have three big flyers. Oh wow, apparently we saw our entire deck here. So, Plummet's coming up. Could also draw in two the Plummet's uh, to kill Sephara right now. But then we're not dealing with the Jani. I guess we can attack a Jani, but it's a, a little risky maybe. What goes wrong if we let Sephara survive a turn? Can't be too bad. Let's just kill a Jani. And then, yeah, I'll discard Courser. Courser is not doing much. Keep it on top. And then uh, activate this once again. Keep on top. Get this back. And do I play skeleton or keep it in hand? I guess I'll keep it in hand. Alright, next turn. Hopefully we kill Sephara and hopefully we can start attacking. Well, it's not every day that you beat a deck with so many mythics and rares. But uh, yeah, some useful sideboard cards, potent maybe making a few small missteps that cost them pretty badly. Let's go. Alright, so we're on the draw. Yeah, not a perfect hand, but I'll keep... Definitely want to play the first Swamp in case of Fan Lurker on two. But then I'm probably going to play Forest before I play another Swamp in case of Dread Presence. Whoa, Sapperwing! Thank you so much, Sapperwing. Once again, very generous. Very much appreciate it. Yeah, that was definitely a cool game. Maybe shouldn't have blocked here. But it's kind of a free attack for the opponent, so they don't have to have anything. And I can still play Siphon next turn. Even if the Leafkin dies. Although now we don't have double green for Silverback, I guess. Do I even care about the Spider? Yeah, I kind of do. Reason not to block, of course, Blade Brands, Cutthroat. Probably should not have blocked because of Cutthroat. So they had both Blade Brands and Cutthroat. So they must have drawn a Cutthroat otherwise. Probably made more sense for them to Cutthroat last turn. Eh, let's just play a Spider. Getting these cards out of their hand is also somewhat valuable since we kind of want to be able to block with Spider and other cards in the future. Thief, so they've got a pretty synergistic Thief deck here, Cutthroat, Blade Brand, 
play quite well with it. So we're a bit heavy on the swamps and not enough forest now with the silverback, sadly. Yeah, let's just say go. Alright, I guess now we can soul salvage. It's not ideal here. I think I do bone splinters. We do have Evolving Wilds now to get double green. Next turn I can play Spider, the turn after I can play Silverback. Don't want this to get out of hand. Alright, I'm glad I killed this when I had the chance. Alright, so we're kind of stable. But our opponent might be holding some Powerful cards that they haven't had the chance to cast yet. Murderers, acceptable. Just want to preserve our life total. Get our second green. It's not bad. They probably have a relevant card left. Since they missed a few land drops, Apicure. Keep Swamp in hand in case of Dread Presence. Alright, well, from one Cavalier to another. Pretty nice synergy with uh, Reclamation too. So when this dies, they get to return a creature, which would probably be the Thief. So we've got a pretty grindy deck, much like ours. So I can triple block Cavalier, I can chump it with a Skeleton and then eat a Sentinel, letting them draw a card. They're still pretty far away from activating this. I think I'd rather do this. Right, let's just get back Skeleton, play Skeleton. And then what do we shuffle back? Splinters, Silverback, Soul Salvage, maybe. Alright, so we'll have to find some removal spells before opponent goes off with the Wake Root Elemental. They've got a lot of uh, big stuff here. The skeleton is quite good against all these big creatures, but... Interesting. I mean, they could have a pump spell, don't think we can play around it. That's eventually gonna kill us too. Altar's good with the skeleton. But yeah, we're gonna die to the sorcerer. I'm pretty close to dead here. Ok, 
can return skeleton. Play skeleton. Probably gotta just play the leafkin at this point. But uh, yeah, we have to top deck next turn basically to answer the sorcerer. I mean, I don't have to play the leafkin, I can just put sanitarium skeleton on feral abomination. Demon on thief. Go to one. And if we find some life gain, then I might want to discard Leafkin later. Did not expect them to attack with the Sorcerer. So I can make three blockers, they've got four attackers. I guess it's worth a shot. Yeah, it's uh, taking the opponent's deck list for a second. So Blade Brand, Cutthroat, Murder, Rabbit Bites. Awake Root, Cavalier, Sorcerer, Reclamation. Is that enough to bring in a Disenchant for just Reclamation? Probably not. But it is a problematic card. No Flyers, don't need Plummets, probably don't need Fail. Only good against Murder. Yep. Vorst Claw seems medium. When they can just murder it, but I guess it is pretty big. Just trades for Feral Abomination. So it's like, okay, don't know if I want a second one. Invocation Scuttable. Maybe Natural Land just for the Reclamation is still worth it, just because this card is kind of important to deal with. Let's just try this. Reasonable hand. I think we Courser first. Alright, so we get to attack for three. And then I guess we'll play Shaman. Don't really want to murder the Netcaster, so I don't want to play Vulture that just gets blanked. We'll need a second swamp eventually, but I might draw a Dread Presence before we need it. If you have six copies of Undead Servant in draft, would you run all of them? Or is that too many? I mean, if you don't have any other four drops, then go for it. If you have some amazing other four and five drops and expensive cards in general, then it becomes trickier. But uh, overall, the more the merrier. I think I take it. I'm okay with the trade, play another Courser, and then next turn maybe I'll murder if they equip Spider. That equipment is going to be annoying long term though. This would have been a good spot for the Feral Invocation. If I play the Swamp then I can murder plus Vulture next turn, so I think I should play it in case I draw Swamp. If I draw a Dread Presence, I'll regret it, but we've got more Swamps and Dread Presences in our deck. I wouldn't take Undead Servant highly, but if you like see it in the middle of the pack and there's nothing good in the pack that you want to take instead, then you can start picking the Undead Servants to see if you can end up in that deck. But I wouldn't take them over actual good cards. Alright, I mean, I guess we'll have to go for this, and we did get uh, Vulture, so got rewarded for playing the Swamp at least. 
The upside of trading now is if our opponent has Reclamation, we also have Reclamation in the deck, but we don't know if we're actually going to draw it. So in just in case our opponent has Moldervine Reclamation in hand, I think it's probably better to trade now than it is to trade later. No, Gravedigger. Oh well. Still have a Soul Salvage in our deck somewhere. Alternatively, I can not attack and then Shaman, I guess, just attacks even better into this. Because if I blo attack now, they'll get a 1 2 pop and another 2 2, and they can block the Silverback profitably, maybe. So I guess there's no reason to attack right now. Keep this for Altar. Alright, well, we got our opponent down to 9. Hopefully, they can't answer the Vulture. an interesting attack. Ooh, that was a great draw. So Gravedigger and Silverback. And then we'll play Gravedigger. Get back Force Claw, I guess. Still have our flyer in the air here, clocking them. And then might actually be better to play the Shaman than it is Vorse Claw, since they can just jump Vorse Claw with a pop for a while. Try and get them dead. The Natural Land could also come in handy. Desperation time. Block with a Corsair, I think, in case of Blade Brand or Cutthroat draws. Ooh, that's a good one. That's scary. So I think I send everyone. I could just attack them for two turns with a Vulture, but I think there's a chance we can kill them right now. And I think we should take that chance. Alright, aren't they just taking lethal right now? Am I missing something? It's a weird block. Oh well. Alright, so... I mean, it's not like we have any answers to Knight of the Abel Legion that we don't already have. And then Natural Land, I guess, is okay. They've got Indenture, Reclamation, plus... The saddle should be plenty of targets, especially Reclamation is the scary one. Like Axe could be okay if it's kind of a grindy game where creatures trade in combat. We haven't seen many targets for Veil of Summer, so I don't think I want it. If they showed us multiple murders, then maybe. Great hand. It's a pretty great one drop. Although, technically, the skeleton keeps the knight at bay. And we might be able to siphon it before it gets too big. So I'll play the Leafkin, even though we give up on a bit of scry value. Just want that thing gone before it gets out of hand. I 
Am I blocking the Sentinel or the Wolf token with the Leafkin Druids when they have Cutthroats and Blade Brands in their deck? Could also not play Season and just keep a murder, but it seems like a waste when they have so many bombs we need to murder instead. So maybe I'm just supposed to take it or jump with the Skeleton, although I kind of want to keep Skeleton in play for the altar. Thanks with everyone. Kind of need the mana from Leafkin, so I think I'll take four for now. Play Reclamation and then I can block more aggressively. It's a lot of pops. We haven't seen Overcome in the previous two games, but they could easily have it in the deck. Let's grab a forest, I guess. Alright, now jumping is a lot more appealing. And now we've got the Alter Skeleton Reclamation Plan, which is pretty solid. Bone stock on three. Could still be okay to take six, so I can sack Skeleton to Alter next turn. Although I can also just sack the Leafkin, to be honest. Yeah, I think I just want to preserve my life total. Ooh, that's a spicy draw. It would be nice to keep up murder in case of a blade brand, but I don't think we can really set that up here. So what I can do is alter, sacking druid, discarding swamp. I think that's the play. Yeah, I mean, cutthroat's gonna be annoying, but there's not much we can do about it. Alright. Overcome is also probably game over. So let's see that Blade Brand. At least it's still a trade. We get to gain a life, draw a card. So we're doing okay. If I draw into a land after using Altar and drawing with Reclamation. I could maybe go like Gravedigger plus Druid. Do want to discourage the Thief from attacking. Could just get back Skeleton and then sack the Skeleton, discarding Leafkin Druid, for example. Murder seems okay. And I think I'm playing a lance. I don't know, I guess I could have kept up since we know we are drawing murder. But if the demon dies, then I might draw murder plus something else. And if that something else is a lance, then I might want a seventh land in play. So this could be a cutthroat. All right, that's manageable. So we finally get to keep one of our blockers back. Any reason to kill it now? I guess if they go forest, they can activate it. So maybe should kill it right away. We are down to six, so definitely a precarious life total. Hopefully the reclamation can make up for it. Why not play Force Claw? Force Claw would have also been okay. But eventually we'll have to kill this, and I would rather not let them make a 5-5, given a chance. That's fine. So it feels like we're getting a bit of breathing room here. Alright, still being aggressive. Try and get in that 2 damage. So they probably don't have a Cutthroat. It's pretty clear, otherwise they would have played last turn or this turn. Bone Splinters is pretty nice. So I could go a Spider plus Skeleton. 
I could... There's nothing to Grave Diggers there. Like Leaf Kindreds. I guess getting more mana is useful. Not too worried about the Tracker quite yet. If I Spider plus Skeleton, can I afford to attack with a 5 5? Because I do want to start killing them too. I guess we'll have two blockers. If they kill one, we're still safe. Yeah, I think I do start attacking. Without land, threat presence doesn't do much. I don't know, it's close. I think I'd rather dig for something else. Forest doesn't seem needed. It lets us Vorse Claw plus Splinters, but we're probably drawing a land anyway. I don't think we can afford to alter. No, I think we gotta wait. I guess we go to three thanks to the Reclamation, but then we're also dead to the Siphon. Do we still have Evolving Wilds? That's gone. Alright, so they just killed both creatures, but uh, Reclamation's keeping us alive, luckily. Alright, well, wish we had a Dread Presence now, I guess. I think I like Fun Lurker. I can get back Skeleton, play Skeleton. And I think we gotta play defense now. Natural ends. I mean, it does gain us three life, but I don't want to destroy my own enchantments. I think I'm actually keeping it, just because if they find their own reclamation, I want to have an answer. This game could stall out for a while. Abomination, that's okay. Probably just gonna use bone splinters on abomination. Keep the murder. Could just jam a Vorse Claw. Keep Swamp in case we redraw the Dread Presence in a while. Although it's gonna be a pretty long while before we get there. Let's just jam Vorse Claw. All right, let's say go. I want to start attacking as soon as possible, but I think we still need three blockers for now. Opponent's going wide. Yeah, let's just go wide as well, I guess. Yeah, we can destroy the Wolfkin Bond as well to gain a bit of life. I think I want to keep Natural Land for something else, but... Worth pointing out. So opponent has how many attackers? One, two, three, four, five, six. Five blockers, so we're not dead, but if they draw removal, we could be in trouble. Soul salvage, probably worth keeping. Yeah, kind of regretting bottoming that uh, Dread Presence, but at the time we were kind of pinched on mana. Since just being able to make a couple of demons here would be pretty big. So maybe I can afford to make another demon here. Sacking Skeleton, discarding land. How close are we to redrawing the Dread Presence? Still a couple turns away. Yeah, I think I'll go for it. Vulture, Shaman, so I don't want to mill the Shaman. I guess we can Soul Salvage it back as well. But if I just get back Skeleton, play Skeleton and then keep up, I guess I tap my mana awkwardly. 
I wanted to keep up murder. Now I get to keep up natural land, which still gives us a bit of safety here. I think we still have to wait before I can attack. Just need that one extra creature, I think. To make it extra safe. Tracker misses. Alright, we should be able to take over now. If all goes well. So if I play Vulture, I'll mill the Loaming Shaman. Which I can also Soul Salvage back. Still have a Gravedigger in hand, so I think my play is just going to be play Silver back, attack for 5, and then I can set up lethal next turn by attacking with both Flyers. This kind of forces them to come up with something. Still have Murder and Natural End in hand, so that should be relatively safe. Sorcerer's fine. Alright, so they seem pretty dead now, because we can murder the Cavalier to prevent the life gain, and I don't think the Cavalier can get anything back that gains some life. Does Beetle do anything? Don't think so. Let's just do this now, I guess. Alright, that was a close game. Pretty grindy. But I think we got there. Any unblocked creatures? Doesn't look like it. Alright. It's definitely not uh, a deck that wins very quickly. Alright, so we're on the draw. No green mana. Um, how does this hand do with any lands? We get to play a Vulture. Need double green for Shaman. This one's close. Two lands gives a Siphon. I think uh, it's worth keeping. Hmm, alright. Up against Black Green with a turn 2 Woodland Champion. Could be scary. Although they're stuck on 2 as well. Yeah, this is awkward. What to discard? Probably the Tracker. Don't think we'll be tracking when stuck on lands. Well, looks like they also kept the Greedy one. That seems like a pretty good trade for us. Ooh, alright, so we're getting close to Dread Presence value. Uh, the way we get punished for playing Dread Presence right now is if our opponent has like Swamp into Murder. If we miss and they go like Land Land into Siphon or Creature into Rabbit Bite. But I think I like it. Just puts the most power and toughness in play at the moment. And once we hit land 5, we want to play Shaman, if it's a forest at least. So, they could have a Bone Splinters to kill the Red Presence, so be it. Not gonna Bone Splinters because of that. This card's a Meteor Golem. For now we get to play a Silverback after attacking. Don't think I play around Bladebrand, they probably would have cycled that already. Plus we also had a Murder just in case. And yeah, Silverback applies a ton of pressure if they keep missing land drops here. What did we mill with the Vulture? Courser Gravedigger. In case we find a Soul Salvage. 
Blood Burglar. It's not gonna cut it. Could also murder it and keep Siphon to go face. So let's see, we get to deal uh, 10 damage. Put him to 5 if we murder. Yeah, I think I would rather murder than Siphon to keep this as a burn spell. But I'm pretty sure they're dead here. Don't really see how they recover from this position. At 5 life facing a bunch of lethal threats and 3 damage in hand. Well, not the most interesting game. So they showed us Meter Golem, Sanitarium Skeleton, Ferocious Pup, the Champion, which also plays well with the Pup, and Skeleton plus Bone Splinter is a nice combo. So how do we want a sideboard? Pretty similar to our previous matchup. Didn't think we have seen a great reason to bring in Natural and Veil of Summer's okay against Bone Splinters. So that's an option, and that's about it. Vorsklaw, one of them might be okay. Don't think I want a second one since it's pretty poor against Bone Splinters. Anything else that stands out that's particularly bad? Maybe Feral Invocation can go. Spider's not at its best in this matchup, not too many flyers we need to block. So I could see like a 2-4 being better than a 3-5 since this has a relevant ability. Epicure could be slightly better than a Spider. So I think I'll cut Spider for Epicure and then cut Invocation for... Veil of Summer. Try this. Yeah, Axe can also be okay on the draw. It's a little worse than on the play usually, but still a consideration for sure. In this type of grindy creature matchup that's mostly on the ground and where apparent toughness matters. And seems totally fine. Ideally we can Dread Presence and play a Swamp in the same turn. Lead with a Swamp in case of Fun Lurker. They also put us on the play, which is peculiar. Ooh, hello. A Leafkin uh, is quite nice here, letting us ramp into Dread Presence. And an Evolving Wilds. Didn't think I wanted to shuffle the Evolving Wilds back. Alright, opponent's playing blue as well. Maybe explain some of the mana issues they had in the previous game. And then I'll fetch a forest here. Keep more swamps in the deck for Dread Presence. Alright, so we'll go Dread Presence Swamp. And hope Dread Presence survives. Looks like a Siphon murder. Alright, Siphon would have been worse. Skeleton. And yeah, now we don't have much going on, sadly. Probably keep Swamps in hand still in case we draw Soul Salvage or Gravedigger to get Dread Presence back. Got a bunch of removal, but nothing worth killing. And there's a green mana. So hoping to draw a Reclamation, Altar, Bones looking at the Graveyard as well. What did they mill with the Vulture, Golem, Burglar? So if they have another Soul Salvage, that would be pretty good here. Yeah, they might have a Yarok in their deck, which explains the three colors. So is it a Gravedigger or a Soul Salvage? Soul Salvage number two, getting back Vulture and Burglar. So not going for the Meteor Golem quite yet. Uh, I guess I can attack. I mean, I don't really want to siphon the burglar. I think I'm better off keeping it back and then trading. Because I want to keep siphon for the flyer since we took out spider so we don't have a great way to deal with the vulture other than our own vulture. And I don't want them gaining life over and over again. So we'll just uh, play season. Pass a turn. I mean, I guess we don't care too much about them gaining life. It's mostly that we're kind of the aggressor here with how this game has played out. They have Reclamation as well. Well, now I don't want to trade anymore. Alright, so we're uh, hoping to draw our own Reclamation. Hopefully, well, there we go. 
opponent does have a meter golem that they might be able to get back to destroy our reclamation. Probably better off just saying go. And going for the trade, since we're kind of light on action, and attacking doesn't do much when they can attack us back and gain two. Alright, let's take the trade. And if they have a blade brand or cutthroat, I don't really care. So I think I'm okay uh, blocking here as well. Vulture versus Vulture, so our decks are pretty similar. And the important part here is that they already milled one of the Soul Salvages, which otherwise could be quite powerful in the matchup. We still have a Grave Digger and a Soul Salvage somewhere in our remaining deck. They do indeed have Cutthroats, Splashing Blue for Winged Wards, and wow, Altar was an amazing draw. I think I play that right now and then just sag the Leafkin Druids. And then I can discard land. Don't need more swamps. Keep land in hand as discard fodder. So now we just need a sanitarium skeleton to assemble the entire combo here. Yeah, they could have a scholar in blue. It's a pretty greedy splash, but given the gift, it's definitely possible. And yeah, there we go. Scholar get back uh, double soul salvage or soul salvage murder. Uh, I guess I'll take one. So soul salvage plus scholar is kind of a combo as well. Since nothing gets exiled, then they can just keep looping those. And I guess we have Floaming Shaman to break up the combo. Although it's in the graveyard right now. Soul Salvage gone, sadly. Skeleton we definitely want. Yeah. Right, gotta find, uh, I guess, Gravedigger. Well, there we go. <laughs> Asking you shall receive. So Gravedigger can get back Dread Presence or Loaming Shaman, probably Loaming Shaman, to disrupt our combo. And I've got Skeleton, Altar and Reclamation all working together. Do have to be careful that we don't deck ourselves, 17 cards. Bone Splinter sacking Scholar, let's see if they salvage the Scholar right now or if they wait. Although decking is a real concern here, since it might take a while before we actually get to kill them. I guess they're gonna soul salvage right now. I mean, I can still shuffle away all those sorceries so they don't get the soul salvages and the murders anymore with the scholar. But now they have a meter golem that they can cast to destroy any part of our combo, probably the altar. So that's kind of rough. Are they close to decking? 14 cards versus 14. I mean, maybe we should just try and deck them, but they're probably going to outgrind us with the Scholar first. The Shaman's in our graveyard, so we could Grave Digger it back. I guess we couldn't even cast it right now anyway, since we don't have the mana. So what's the play for now? Play Apicure and then make a 5-5. Five five. I could get back Shaman. But maybe the play is just to avoid milling by... Just uh, targeting ourselves with a Loaming Shaman. I guess we'll keep the murder. Don't 
don't have a way to destroy the Gift of Paradise to take them off double blue, at least not in the main deck here. Let's see what the Golem destroys, probably the altar. So we've got a small window to get in a bit of damage, but it's probably not enough here. I mean, now I have the mana to Gravedigger and cast a Shaman, so that would take them off looping back uh, Murders and Bone Splinters and Soul Salvages. Could also attack first, maybe they chump with a Skeleton, and then we get that shuffled away as well. And if they double block, I mean, I don't want to have to murder, but I guess then we lose the Apicure. Yeah, this is a tough decision. Like, we're just not beating the value engine of Scholar is a problem. And I think in 13 turns, our opponent has enough time to kill us. And kind of just outgrind us. So I think we should try and go on the more aggressive plan. Even though we don't have much to back it up. Yeah, opponent does go for the double block, so we'll sadly just kill Skeleton. Since I think we need to get rid of Skeleton in order to win this. This feels kind of bad, but uh, we'll try. Opponent's got 12 cards, we've got 11. But they have a scholar and we don't. I think I'm gonna stick to the plan. Veil of Summer, sure. Gotta protect the demon, I guess, if it gets to live. So, I think we shuffle everything back. To make it less likely that they draw their good cards. And so Soul Salvage actually doesn't do anything. If they draw one. Not sure here. Could be that the mill plan is better. Yeah, they had another murder in hand, so now the Veil of Summer's looking bad. You can get the murder back with the Scholar. Yeah, I needed them not to have another murder. Because now we're going to deck way before the opponent does, so we have to try and close out this game. Yeah, that's an issue. I think we're probably losing either way. Both plans probably don't line up well against the Scholar here. This is kind of the trump card in the matchup. Yeah, just don't have any great plays. Yeah, maybe this was the wrong approach. I don't know. It's a difficult choice. I see. Well, if they also had Loaming Shaman, then we were never decking them in time. So I guess we were going to lose anyway. So we've got very similar decks. Ponus got Scholar, we don't. Just got to hope they stumble on mana like they did in the first game. So they just shuffled bad cards into our deck, leaving all the good cards in the graveyard. But now, I mean, maybe we can mill them now. Although, 
I guess they can like just sacrifice a Loaming Shaman at some point to a Bone Splinters and get it back with the Soul Salvage with the Scholar. Nothing we can really do about that to stop that. We're not racing him on the ground anymore. And there's a Bone Splinters. Alright, I think I'm done here. Don't have any exile base removal. Natural land seems good to destroy the reclamation. Could try and be more aggressive with invocation, but our opponent's got multiple murders, bone splinters. So I don't think pump spells are the way to go. Yeah, axe could be better than tracker, they're both pretty bad. Spider blocks the opponents, vulture, it's the only flyer we've seen. Force claw seems kinda medium. Probably just got the tracker. Alright, let's try this. They also decided to put us on the play in the previous game, um, so they actively want to be on the draw. Could have put them on the play, don't think that would have done much for us. Uh, the sand's not great, don't think I can mulligan though. Like, our hand wants to have a bunch of centaur coursers basically. And then back those up with removal, get our opponent dead before they assemble all their shenanigans, but... Yeah, like even a vampire of the dire moon would have stopped us in our tracks. Opponents with uh, all three colors, so mana screw is probably not gonna happen this game. And lots of defense, so the aggro plan's not looking great. So our best hope is that they just don't have the late game grindy cards and we draw into them. Uh, probably just gotta chill. I could play Looming Shaman, doesn't do much on this board. Probably just keep it and then play a Shaman next turn. They've got the mana fixing, double blue for Scholar already, gifts all the fixing they want. Next turn we can consider murdering the vampire, but against Soul Salvage. Seems kind of like a bad idea. I can attack with both, put on double blocks Corsair, single blocks Shaman. I can murder the double block to keep Corsair. Next turn they like Soul Salvage back, Vampire and Burglar, and then we're back where we started. Probably want to wait with making trades until we find Reclamation or like Altar to take over. Don't want to make random trades on the ground when they have double soul salvage in their deck. On the other hand, if they find their reclamation, then we might uh, regret it. Find skeleton. So no soul salvage is milled. They can get back skeleton end of turn. Yeah, this seems like a rough matchup. The decks are very similar. They just have the mirror breaker. I mean, I can again use Shaman to shuffle their deck to disable uh, Soul Salvage. Maybe that's the play. So I think I'll attack, see how they block. If they put Vampire on Shaman, I can murder it to trample over for five and then use Shaman to maybe shuffle their deck. I don't know. Definitely want a Skeleton to block, although I guess they can return that one at instant speed.
Skeleton chumps. Ideally, I would have waited until we could, like, get rid of the skeleton with the uh, Loaming Shaman. But I think this was our best window. So this is gone, this is gone, this is gone. This is gone, this is gone. Everything's gone. So hopefully we made some soul salvages worse. And now we're somewhat ahead on board. And if their hand is two soul salvages, for example, now we can try and leverage this as board advantage before they recover. That's the hope. Their own Loaming Shaman. Sure. Just as a 3-2 blocker, are we shuffling back anything? And Evolving Wilds. All right, time to attack, and then Gravedigger back, something. They could double block the silver back. Put on down to 12, and draw a card. All right, that can destroy the season as well. Might want to keep it for a reclamation. Definitely getting back silver back here. Question is, do I kill the season? I think I keep it for reclamation since this game, if it goes according to our plan, is going to end next turn unless, or like in two turns, unless our opponent finds reclamation, then they can kind of prolong the game. If they don't find it, then we could just win in a turn or two. So I want to keep... Uh, Natural land as an answer. Yeah, exactly. Season of growth can improve their draw, which is not irrelevant, but it's not as impactful as a reclamation would be. Are they soul salvaging back just a looming shaman here? That's what they're looking at. <laughs> There's the Evolving Wilds that they shuffled back a while ago. Let's attack. Don't think I want to Bone Splinters. We haven't seen any Pump Spells. Which would be a reason to also kill the Season. Bones down to four. And we get to add a Silver back to the board. So you're saying there's a chance. There's a soul salvage, but is it enough? They need to hit a lot of creatures with this uh, vulture. Could have a bone splinters as well, I guess. And they get to set up their mill with a season. Keeps card on top, so that's a creature. Hits three creatures up to seven, ouch. And they have a Bone Splinters as well. It looks like they do. So that's a dead silver back. I'll fetch a response. So if we can find a cheap creature here with our two draw steps, to, so we can Bone Splinters the Vulture, we've got the game. So two draw steps to find a creature. Soul Salvage, that should do it. Soul Salvage, Courser, Bone Splinters, attack for 8. Wow, oh, what a game.
Well, we found a way. Serpent, when we cast a Loaming Shaman, could have easily had one or two recursion cards in hand, like Soul Salvage. So by emptying the graveyard with the Shaman, we didn't give them an opportunity to leverage those cards while trying to get ahead on board. And that small window where we were able to deploy a few creatures was just enough to sneak underneath their graveyard recursion, which would have eventually taken over the game, since I think their late game was uh, a little bit more powerful than ours. Yeah, we lost the first match and then won five straight in a row, but they definitely made us work for it. Outside of maybe the one game where our opponent was stuck on two lands, all the games were pretty interesting and grindy. Lots of decisions, sideboarding, going deep. And we pretty much used every part of the buffalo when it came to sideboarding. Natural lands, uh, plummets, all the cards, basically. That was fun. Although, pretty long draft, probably the longest draft to date. All right, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.